Well done, Charlie. That uh, takes a lot of courage to do that. And it was bloody awesome. Uh, you're lucky that you don't live with an ex-police woman because I wouldn't have got away with what you have got away with for five years because they, they pick things up, Charlie. So. Um, we, we did have a, another guest speaker, a guy by the name of Greg Hadlow. Greg hasn't arrived, has he? Greg rang me. Oh, good to see you here, Blue. Yeah, fantastic. Greg rang me last Saturday night at about nine o'clock. Uh, Greg had his prostate out six months ago, and I've um, I kept in contact with Greg and sort of talked to him about a few issues he might uh, encounter along the way. He rang me at nine o'clock last Saturday night. He was a little bit under the weather. He said, I've got a fat. <laughs> I said, bullshit! I've been 14 months and I've had one, and you've got one up to six. And you had open surgery and all that. He said, yeah, no, I've got a fat. I want to, I want to come to corporate and tell the blokes about it. <laughs> and they had to drop it up. It's sort of a blank team. Yeah, it might have gone down on him, Molly. Might have gone down on him. Anyway, I just... We've got a couple of other guest speakers, but rather than uh, have two speakers in a row on depression, I, th I think I'll just probably give you a little bit of insight into what I went through with uh, prostate cancer. I had a uh, test at 50 years of age. Um, my prostate level was 3.6, and that sounded all right. I uh, wasn't too concerned about that, but the doc said it was a bit high, so we're going to have to keep an eye on it. <coughs> anyway, two years later, for some reason or other, Jody was off to have a mammogram or a pap smear or something. I said, well, shit, I'm going to go back and get me prostate checked again. So I went back and it came back 11.7, and I, I knew that wasn't too good. And the doc said, well, you better get up on the table. He gave me the uh, rectal and could feel a bit of a lump. And he said, I need you in Perth in, within two weeks. So I went down there, had a biopsy. Uh, eight biopsies, one showed uh, cancer at level eight out of 10. And they booked me in and I, I had the prostate out within a month. But I, I'm pretty, pretty sure that if I hadn't have picked it up then, that I probably would have been a very sick man today. So, the message really is about early early detection, whether it's prostate cancer, whether it's melanomas, whether it's diabetes, whatever. If something's changed in your body, just go and get it checked out or, or just have an annual check and, and just keep on top of it because the stories like myself and Charlie and, and stories you'll hear later on that you can do something about it and you do survive a lot of things that you wouldn't if you didn't detect it early. So anyway, I went to have my prostate out. They booked me in the hospital on a Friday, sent me home on Saturday, uh, had a few, quite a few little holes in my tummy. And they said that uh, you'll, you'll be incontinent for a while, imminency is gonna be a big problem down the track. And yeah, took all that on board said that um, you know, if you do your pelvic floor exercises that uh, that will help in that department. So I did all that and I came out of the operation. I didn't have any problems with incontinency. I virtually wore a nappy for a couple of days and threw it away because I was had it all under control. But the evidence side of it was a bit of a problem. And just I'd like to apologise to me kids and anyone else. <laughs> There's <laughs> a story for you. If you want to go outside, Troy and Dave. <laughs> uh, Joe, if you want to go out. <laughs> but anyway, there are methods apparently to, uh, to, to get it to work. <laughs> so, so I went through the, I went through the stages. I um, tried, the, tried the pills, they had Cialis and Viagra and something else, but nothing nothing seemed to be working. 
So it was in January last year we thought, well, while we're on holidays, it'd be a good time to, you know, get it to work. So we drove to Perth and went to the uh, Keo Institute to uh, have an injection. Now, it's meant to be foolproof. Oh, uh, this, this works all the time. So I went down there and the docs stuck it in the side and for the next three hours I went through that much agony you would never believe. From the time they put the needle up, it hurt going in and then the whole time it came up it hurt and the whole time going down it hurt and like I was his last appointment at 12 o'clock, he never left till 3. <laughs> he was consoling me. And, uh, <laughs> it wasn't until I had fully gone down that I got any sort of relief at all. And that fixed that for about two or three months. So I thought, well, I'll go back and try a different doctor. Went back, tried a different doctor, had the injection, and up it came, and it wasn't too bad. And ever since then, I've, I've been okay. I've been like sexually active and all that sort of thing. But he said you can monitor the doses. So uh, I was just upping it by a little bit each time, I did it. <laughs> trying to keep it under control a bit. And just had I come in at lunch time, and I had a, I had a shy meeting on at three o'clock, and come in at lunch time, twelve o'clock, and. And Joe was a bit amorous. And all. So you take, uh, the last time we did it, it took two hours to go down. So if you want to do it, you better do it. Well, we better do it now. Okay, so I went and injected. I just upped it a little bit. I think I went from 25 to 30 mils, and and then anyway, I worked very, very well. And then afterwards, I still I thought, well, I'll go out the back back and check the sheep and drive around for a while and hopefully it'll go down. <laughs> and what, nothing, nothing was happening. You know, I was out there and I thought there's a dam over there. I'll just pull up there and sprinkle a bit of cold water on it and it still wouldn't go down. And so I was getting close to shy when in time. I thought, gee, I, I don't think I'm going to be able to go in like this. <laughs> so I thought, well, I better read Gordon. So I read Gordon, the shy person, and said, Gordon, something's come up. <laughs> I'll make it to the meeting. <laughs> he said, no worries, no worries, I'll put you in <laughs> um, Yeah, uh, that's been a bit of a standing joke for a while. Uh, I'm, I'm really, really happy that uh, my prostate cancer was detected early. And all you blokes have got the opportunity to have a blood test tomorrow morning. That's what it's all about, whether it's uh, your prostate, whether it's about uh, sunspots on your body. I just urge you all to, once a year, go to the doc, have a blood test. It's cheap. Like most, of, most of the places, is, it's no cost. So go on, have your blood test. Have a rectal every second time you're there. <laughs> I don't have to have any more of it. <laughs> But that is the blood test is an indication. The rectal is the is the is the real real way of, of, of testing. But just we've got a mate in Lake Grace that's uh, in a bit of trouble at the moment with um, with a melanoma. I mean, he might have been able to uh, have that under control if he'd have just got the doctor to check his moles or his sunspots or whatever a little bit earlier. So just to urge you all early detection and uh, we'll live a lot longer. Thank you very much.